heal me. I ended up in the ER because of too much passion. It was embarrassing as hell waking up and being told that I had gotten a mild heart attack. All because of overdosing on libido-enhancing pills. Not that there was anything wrong with me in the first place. It was just that my friend with benefits and I had gotten too carried away and curious. I had accidentally dropped the double dose in my drink because I had gotten distracted and forgotten which cup had the pills. So instead of throwing both beverages away, I decided that it would be fun if one of us had a double dose. I did not think that anything would happen, except a very hot night of passion, of which it was a very interesting night in the end. I started feeling my heartbeat get faster along with the pain in my chest, and then I pretty much blacked out. I woke up in the AR where my friend Robert and my sister Irene were waiting for me to wake up. Are you an idiot? Overdosing on sex drugs? She started as soon as I woke up. It took me a while to adjust to the bright lights and her loud shouting. She was always a dramatic one in the family. It was libido-enhancing pills. Come down, sister. I managed to force out. That did not help, and she began lecturing me on how I could have died. Blah, blah, blah. Robert, on the other hand, looked terrified, out of his mind, and he merely shrugged when I gave him a pleading look. You're so lucky that mom and dad are not in town. I wonder what they would have said if I knew that their only son was busy with drugs. I knew that this one over here was a bad influence on you, she pointed at Robert, who winced. And I was stuck on there with no means of getting out while I listened to her scold me. Anyways, it is good that you're alive. I was so worried, she said as she hugged me tightly. Her moods changed like the weather most of the time, sunny one second and stormy the next. I see that the patient has woken up. You're lucky that your friend here called 911 just in time. If he had been late, it would have been a different story, someone said. I found out that I was connected to the heart monitor when it started to beep really loudly. It had nothing to do with my condition and everything to do with the handsome doctor who was in front of me. Even my sister stopped sobbing and stared at him. Maybe it was the way he carried himself, or his looks, but he was handsome in a devastating way. He rushed over to me and started checking my vitals or something. I had no idea. I exchanged looks with Robert and mouthed, Robert and I were friends with benefits. We had been having casual sex for a couple of years now, whenever we both found ourselves single. But besides that, we were very good friends, and it was platonic. There had never been any feelings involved between us. Our friendship was a bit unorthodox, but it worked for the both of us. Okay, you seem fine. Your heart seems to be settling too. A reaction like this to those pills will have to be closely monitored in case of complications. Your condition could worsen at any time, so I'm going to keep you here for the observation for a couple of days, okay? Sir and ma'am, could you leave the patient and myself, please? He said. My sister and Robert left us. I'm Dr. Sykes, and I will be assisting you to the best of my ability so that you make a speedy recovery. I will need you to answer a few questions for me, please, he said. Even his voice was deep and manly. I was not surprised that I was swooning over my doctor. I was quite the flirt, and I appreciated it when a man looked good. Nice to meet you, Dr. Sykes, and you can ask me anything, I gazed at him. Even though I was literally in the hospital because of my uncontrollable passion, I could not help it. As my friends love to say, nothing could stop me from flirting. I thought I caught a bit of redness on his cheeks, but maybe I was seeing things due to a number of pills I had probably been dosed with. He asked a few questions about my health, diet, habits, etc. before leaving. My sister and Robert both came to say goodbye before they both went home because they had work the following day. But before they went, Robert sort of dumped me. Hey, um... I think we should end this, he said. Why, because I nearly died? I asked. Gosh, no, it's not because of that. I met someone, and I'm thinking of getting serious with him, he said. So the next time we're both single then? I asked. Actually, I think it would be best if we remained friends. I think I'm getting too old for the hooking up lifestyle, he said. Well, I was a bit taken aback, and I did not know what to say. In response to him, I just said, okay, and he left. Dr. Sykes came by to check on me a while after Robert was gone. Are you feeling okay? He said. Yes, why? I asked. Well, it's just that you seem less chatty than earlier on. Are you feeling any sharpness in your chest? He asked. Oh, no, my health is fine. I think I just got dumped, I sighed. The guy you were with was your boyfriend, right? He asked. Not at all. We're not together. We're just having fun, I guess. Why am I even telling you this? You must be your strangest patient, right? I said. It helps to talk about it, you know? What most people don't know is that whatever affects your emotional health can affect you physically as well, he said. Now that I think about it, you're right, I said. But exploring is not a bad thing. I'm sure I did my fair share of it when I was younger. 
Then I met my husband, he said. You're married? I asked. Widowed, but enough about me. My shift is about to be over. My colleague will take over and I will see you tomorrow. He grinned, but I could see that there was a bit of pain in his eyes. He did not look that much older than me, so I assumed that his husband's death was a recent thing. I hoped that he would find healing one day and learn to love again. Over the next couple of days, Dr. Sykes and I developed a sort of friendship. He was very caring and a hard worker, always making sure that I was comfortable in between talking about my health. We talked about each other's lives in the beginning. He was a bit closed off, but he was very talkative and persisted, so we cracked in the end. I had never met anyone quite like him, and I became inspired to get my life in order. At such a young age, he was doing so much already with his life, and he planned to open a private practice one day. I was a graphic designer, but I'd been wanting to go solo for a while, but I was too hesitant. We talked about it, and he encouraged me to take plans to make my dream come true, since I could only live once. I think you're right, Doc. Nearly losing my life has put things into perspective, I said. That is good to know, he said as he checked my pulse. Does it scare you, being surrounded by sick people and watching them die all the time? I asked. Well, after he died in this very hospital, I could not even set foot here. The time has healed me, he smiled grimly. In the beginning, the instant attraction that I had felt towards him had been based on looks, but now it was starting to like who he was inside. We had only spoken a handful of times, but I had shared some of my fears with him, and I knew what made him feel pain. That made me see him in a new light, and I developed a little crush on him, which my sister did not fail to notice. So, new love interest? She wiggled her eyebrows when she came to visit me. I was supposed to have been discharged the previous day, but my condition had worsened, and I had experienced very sharp pains in my chest. Dr. Sykes had explained to me that since there was a history of heart-related diseases in my family, my little experiment might have triggered them, so I was stuck for two more days before I was discharged. Oh, shut up, I rolled my eyes. I do not blame you, I mean, look at him. It's a pity he plays for the other team, she shrugged. You have a boyfriend, I exclaimed. Fred and I are just having fun, and besides, I'm not interested in your doctor. You should ask him out, she smiled. How did you even know that he was, I started. You have so little faith in my instinct, she chuckled. She was right. He was usually spot on with her instinct. She had known that I was gay before I even told her. Maybe I'll ask him out, I smirked. On the day that I was discharged, I snuck a little note with my phone number and asked him out on the date onto a pocket of his coat. Then I left it up to fate for him to call me. A week went by and I thought that he was not interested, so I decided to forget about him. Hi, Kieran speaking, a voice said. Kieran who? Kieran Sykes, he responded. It was Dr. Sykes. He wanted to know if I wanted to go to dinner with him in a few days, and he was sorry for contacting me so late, but he had a very busy week at the hospital because it was an Easter weekend. I agreed to go out with him without hesitation. It had been so long without going on a date, and I had been unable to stop thinking about him since that day I was discharged. I had considered going back to the hospital, but I did not want to make it seem like I was stalking him, so I refrained. We went for dinner a few days later, and dare I say he looked so good in a suit. That was pretty bold of you to leave your number with me, he raised an eyebrow. Well, I always been daring, I said as I sipped my wine. He looked at me with an intense gaze, and I stared right back at him. We had a bit of a staring match, and then he smirked before looking away. When are you not frequenting hospitals, what do you do for fun, he asked me. We talked for a very long time while enjoying good food. There was so much chemistry between us, which I was sure was due to the constant flirting that passed between us. It was undeniable that he had as much interest in me as I had in him, and that pleased me so much. At the end of our date, we exchanged a quick but enjoyable kiss before we went on our separate ways, promising to meet again soon. His schedule was pretty hectic, so we could not meet as much as we liked, but we worked around it. We also exchanged some texts while he was at work, which aided me in counting the fall for him. He was everything I liked in a guy, and so much more different than the kinds of guys that I usually fell for. I usually went for guys who had not figured out who they were, which usually led to me being left with a broken heart when they left me for the next guy. I had resigned to just having fun and giving up on finding someone solid, but when I was with him, I felt certain about where we stood, and it felt so secure. I was seriously falling for him much faster than I had imagined. I hoped that we would make it official soon because I liked him. But then after a few months of us going on dates and connecting, he started to withdraw from me. The texts were much shorter and the dates ceased. I was sure that things had been going very well. We were half dating at that point and all we needed was to make it official. But then he started acting strange. I was not about to get ghosted by someone I had spent months getting to know. So I sent him a text asking him what was up. 
Me. Hey, you. We've not spoken much lately. Just checking up on you to make sure that you're okay. I thought there was something between us, but I'm sorry if I was under the wrong impression. He read the message but did not reply, which only made me mad because stuff like that happened every time that I opened up to someone. They ghosted me without an explanation, leaving me to pick up the pieces of my heart. That night, I ended up waking up in the middle of the night because my chest was very sore. It made it difficult to sleep, so I stayed awake for a while. That was when I got a text from him. Kieran, sorry that I'm only getting back to you right now. I had to assist in surgery. When are you free? I would like to make up for being distant and explain things to you. Me, I think there's something wrong with me. My chest hurts. Kieran, I'm still in the hospital. Let me get you over here. A few minutes later, I was taken to the hospital by ambulance. Kieran was already there waiting for me and he looked so worried about me. Another doctor was assigned to me, so I only saw him a bit later. I was fine, but they had to give me some meds and I had to come for regular checkups. Kieran came to see me a little bit later on. Oh, look what the cat dragged in, I said. I take it you are better then. I'm sorry that I did not get back to you. It had nothing to do with you. No, it did, but... You do not like me that much, right? I said. No, I like you so much, Will. It's just that I have not connected with anyone since Jordan's death. I was a bit scared when I discovered that I was falling for you, he said. So sorry, I did not consider that. I've been so insensitive. No, do not blame yourself. I took a break from you so that I could figure out my conflicting feelings. Jordan was my life, but he would have wanted me to be happy. With you, I was so happy for the first time in a long time. I finally felt a flicker of hope that I could love again. And when I thought that I was going to lose you tonight, I realized that I cannot let you go, he said as he squeezed my hand. I understand and I know that you have gone through a lot. I'm falling for you though and I want to make you happy, I said. Will you be my boyfriend then? He asked. Are you sure that you're ready? Yes, I'm very sure that I am, he said. I sat up and pulled him down to me, then I kissed him. He leaned into me and deepened the kiss, causing me to gasp a bit at this sudden passion, but I enjoyed it very much. No exciting the patient, doctor, someone suddenly said. He instantly pulled away from me. I looked to see who was behind him, and it was my sister grinning from ear to ear. Well, this is a nice surprise. I shall not be long. I just wanted to see if he's okay, but it seems that he is doing well, she wiggled her eyebrows. Sister, please stop embarrassing me, I said through gritted teeth, but she only laughed. I will need to go now. I have a patient to check up on, but I will see you later, babe. Okay? He said. Then he gave me a peck on the lips. So, babe, tell me everything that happened, my sister said once he had left. It was the only way to get her off my back, so I filled her in on everything that had happened that night. You know, out of everyone that you have dated, I have a good feeling about him, she said. Me too, I smiled as I thought about him and how we were going to enjoy our time together once I got out of the hospital. Maybe he can hook me up with a friend, who knows, she shrugged. I thought you were not the commitment type, I said. People change, she winked. Early the next morning, I was woken up by a fresh scent of flowers and a note beside my bed. Had to go home and freshen up. I will fetch you in a few hours and we can hang out at my place if you want, the note read. I got up immediately and started to get all my stuff in order. I was so excited to spend the day with my boyfriend. I guess my near-death experience had given me a new lease on life and love. The end. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.